Thank you. The next item of business this afternoon is a member's business debate on motion 14123 in the name of Monica Lennon on South Lanarkshire care homes under threat. And this debate will, as usual, be put without a question uh, being put, sorry, concluded without a question being put. Any members who wish to speak in the debate, I would encourage you to press your request to seat buttons. And I call on Monica Lennon. Thank you, presiding officer. Ensuring good quality of care for older people who can no longer live at home and need to live in a care home setting is an issue which should be important to us all. This provision, however, is at risk in part of the region I represent. On a positive note, South Lancashire Council has an excellent reputation for the eight council care homes it operates. It was rated the best residential care provider in Scotland, according to Witch magazine in 2016. But South Lanarkshire Council is under new management and the SNP administration wants to close down some of those fantastic care homes. Despite repeated pleas from South Scottish Labour councillors, the residents, their families and trade unions, including the GMB and Unison, on behalf of their members who work in the homes, the council is refusing to listen to the case for keeping Kipton House in Blantyre and McWhirter's House in Larkhall open. And I see that some of those care home workers and campaigners are in the public gallery today and are joined by Councillor Lindsay Hamilton and the MP for Rutherglen and Hamilton West, Jed Killen. And as a member of the GMB trade union, I of course refer to my register of, of interests. The council claims that the care homes will be replaced with a new facility at the St Joseph's site in Blantyre. But whilst it, it is welcome that the new Blantyre hub will include transitional care beds and services to help people who are able to return to their own homes, it is not a like-for-like -like replacement. It doesn't help people like Hugh Brady, a McWhirter's resident who needs long-term residential care. So the new SNP administration is making its mark, but not in a good way. It has made a deliberate choice to disinvest in long-term council-run care, but hasn't had the courage to be straight with the public. In the fight to save McWhirter's house, I had hoped that the people of Hamilton, Lackall and Stonehouse would have found an ally in our constituency MSP, Christina McKelvey but she refuses to condemn the council's decision to close the care home. I've written to, to Christina McKelvey twice, asking her to speak out against the closures and inviting her to debate the matter publicly in the constituency. I congratulate Christina McKelvey on her recent appointment as the Minister for Older People. And no doubt she'll be under pressure to toe the party line. But I have to ask, presiding officer, what good is a minister for older people if she can't even stand up for the older people in her own constituency? The people, the people who gave her the privilege of being a member of this parliament in the first place. Now the fact, if I continue, because I'm, I'm struggling with my voice and, and it's affecting my time in presiding officer, the fact support the retention of these care homes South Lanarkshire's older population, above the ages of 75 and 85, is forecasted to increase. And research anticipates that by 2035, demand for care homes across the UK will have increased by one third. South Lanarkshire Council is making a dreadful mistake by reducing the availability of long-term council-run residential care beds. When we have an ageing population with the likely need for care homes set to increase, we should be doing all we can to increase the availability of council-run, publicly owned and publicly accountable care. And that's why, that's why the previous Labour administration in South Lanarkshire set aside £18 million to invest in our care homes, not to close them. The council say they want to support people to remain in their homes for longer. Who would disagree? But for many older people, staying in their own homes is just not possible. I am extremely concerned about the consequences of cutting the long-term bed numbers, especially when delayed discharge remains a pressing problem in our area. 
with older people trapped in hospital for longer than necessary because of insufficient care availability. It's bad for older people and it's expensive for the NHS. Presiding officer, the way the council has managed and communicated this decision has been extremely poor. I'm told that some of the staff and the families of the residents at Kirkton and McWhirters first heard of these plans in the Hamilton Advertiser. That's our local newspaper. There are over 90 members of staff between Kirkton and McWhirters, the majority of whom are female, work part-time, and many have their own caring responsibilities. Simply stating that they will be redeployed elsewhere is little comfort to a hard-working care workforce. There is zero clarity, zero clarity over what will happen to residents and the staff who work there when these homes are closed. I return to Hugh Brady. Well, Mr Stevenson um, doesn't represent Lanarkshire, but let me tell Mr Stevenson about Hugh Brady, because Hugh Brady is 92 years old. He's living with dementia and a number of other health conditions. McWhirter's in Lark Hall is his home. His daughter Anne, who has been tenacious as she tries to get answers from the council, has said, I have had various meetings with different people, but still I am no further forward with a timescale and what care they hope to provide for my father. My dad has worked hard all his life and it was not an easy step to have him cared for in a home. But he is settled there and very happy. I, like many others, feel let down and I'm losing sleep over what will happen next. And I have to say, presiding officer, there's often re robust debate in this chamber, but it's very rude to interrupt when I'm reading a direct quote from a, from a daughter who's worried about her 92-year-old father. In conclusion, presiding officer, there is no good reason for closing down quality care home beds at a time when we are facing an increasing reliance on them. The SNP in South Lanarkshire is willing to shut down older people's care homes rather than speak out against austerity budgets and fight for a fair settlement for the people of South Lanarkshire. I will never stop standing up for my constituents on this important issue, even when others like Christina McKelvey, wherever she is today, don't seem to have the courage to fight for them. The SNP in South Lanarkshire must start listening to the people and act immediately to save our care homes. Thank you. I would just uh, encourage members in the gallery not to applaud. Uh, encourage members not to applaud as well, but encourage members of the gallery not to applaud or intervene. Thank you. I call Fulton McGregor to be followed by James Kelly. Fulton McGregor. Yeah, thank you, President Officer. And, um, I can associate uh, myself with uh, Monica Lennon's uh, sore voice there. I've also been carrying a cold, but I'm afraid to say that it's probably the only association um, that I'll be making today. And I want to firstly start off by a declaration of uh, interest. I was previously employed with South Lanarkshire Council. Um, and I believe this is important because I do uh, have great respect for the ethos in the social work department there. I didn't work in older people or adults, specifically spending my 12 years across children and families and justice, but there was always close working between teams. And perhaps most importantly for this debate was and is the focus of care in the community, whether that's in a child context and working with families to support them or a justice context, steering folk away from custody or in an older adult setting and meeting their needs in their own home. And that's the key presiding officer. This motion and debate brought here by Monica Lane shows a lack of understanding of the health and social care system by the very person who Labour say would be in charge of this area if they were in government. Thank goodness it's an SNP government. There's been a national shift in priority from residential care to care at home, something that is universally agreed by all parties, experts, and it's better for those who are in residential care homes and their families. As we move more people into care at home, the requirement for long-term beds goes down. What is important is that proper plan is in place when doing this. And having spoken to officials at South Lanarkshire Council, I'm told that the closure of two care homes, which Monica Lennon's mentioned, which preside officer are not up to the standard to meet care commission requirements will be offset by opening a new modern facility locally which will have a mixture of long term and intermediate spaces and I heard Monica Lennon's um, issues with the staff which who are also welcome to the chamber today and I hope that the council will work with those members of staff to make sure that they are redeployed and, and, and work to a satisfactory outcome for them but contrast that with the decision presiding officer taking the North Lanarkshire 
by the Labour administration to close Monkland's House in Plains, admittedly not in my constituency, but in Alex Neal's, with no plans for the people who are currently residing there, or for the staff, or for respite care for local people. Presiding officer, Monica Lennon attempts to play politics with this issue will have you believe that the decision is taken to save money. The fact is that the well-being of the service user is the most important issue, most important factor for any healthcare professional, and I truly believe it is for the politicians who take the decision to be based on the advice of the experts. And let's not forget that this particular decision was not taken only by politicians, by the equal representation on the IJB of health board members too. Presiding officer, here is something we should all reflect upon when deciding whether or not to advocate for IJBs across Scotland to increase long-term residential care, rather than the current focus on getting people back into the comfort of their own homes. For every 10 days someone spends in a hospital or care home bed, their muscle capacity will deteriorate by the equivalent of 10 years. This stunt by Monica Lennon is even more embarrassing when we dig a little deeper into the process which led to this decision. No, South Lanarkshire IJB... So I've got to finish. South Lanarkshire IGB agreed the strategic commissioning plan in 2016, which included the shift of focus from residential care to inter in intermediate care and care at home. Presiding officer, I'm sure you'll be surprised as me to learn that the four councillors on the IGB at that time were from the ruling Labour group and the chair of the board was the Labour deputy council leader, councillor Jackie Burns. There are currently eight council operated residential care homes in South Lanarkshire with the recent decision by the IGB there that the number will fall to seven. In Labour, no, I've got a lot to get through. In Labour-controlled North Lanarkshire, until last month, there were two council-operated homes. That has just dropped to one. Why is Monica Lennon not lodging motions about that one in North Lanarkshire? But the fact is, to their credit, North Lanarkshire is way ahead of most other areas in shifting the balance of care from residential to the community. But that said, the recent decision of the Labour Party to remove the automatic entitlement of over 75s to a community alarm opposed by the SNP and even the Tory member of the IGB is questionable to say the least. Surely community alarms are an integral part of keeping people in their own homes and for SNP councillors to be relying on support of Tory members against Labour it's, it's, in North Lanarkshire, it's just unthinkable. Rightly, we want people to stay at home wherever possible, but we should be giving them all the support possible to do so. Presiding officer, this is not a debate that was required. We should be working together to make community care as effective as possible and praising your services who work tirelessly to make it happen. Thank you. Thank you. I call James Kelly to be followed by Graeme Simpson. James Kelly. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I congratulate Monica Lennon in securing this member's debate this afternoon on a very important issue for local people in Lark Hall and Blantyre. That's one of the purposes of members' debates. It allows members to bring forward <laughs> local concerns to the Chamber of the Scottish Parliament and bring them forth and, and uh, allow the government to, to, to account for the decisions that have been taken. Uh, I know that this has got a, I know that this got a real impact uh, on people in Blantyre. I speak as a Glasgow Regional List MSP who covers the Blantyre area. And people are deeply concerned about the closure of Captain House. And that's why there are campaigners and staff uh, in the gallery, joined by Jed Killen, the local MP, and Lindsay Hamilton, one of the councillors, because people see the impact of a home that is based in that Blantyre area, where they, they have relatives, they have friends who are looked after in that home currently, and they see the signal being sent, well, that home is going to be closed. Um, and it's the, the, the decision, there are two flaws in this decision. First of all, uh, in terms of the numbers for the replacement hub, uh, it's one thing saying that you're going to set up a replacement to Captain House with another hub on the St Joseph's site in Blanta, but if there's actually 100 less um, units, then it's a substantial <laughs> reduction in the, the, the care facility that is going to be provided uh, to local people. It's also very short-sighted. We've seen uh, just over the last couple of days in the Finance Committee's report and also in the Fraser Allender, Fraser Allender uh, Institute budget event, uh, the important issue of demographics in Scotland and how we've got a growing elderly population. So it begs the question as to why uh, you would close uh, a care facility and set up one that's got a substantially less uh, number of units. So there's... there's uh, um, yeah, I'll give way. 
Phil Jim McGregor. I'm just wondering if the member will also condemn the decision of Labour run North Lanarkshire to reduce their care homes to just one. James Kelly. I'll, I'll tell you what I'll condemn. The, the, reason, the reason that we're in this situation is the councils have had to f face £1.5 billion pounds of accumulated cuts since 2011. Yeah, exactly. And the reason we're, in that si the reason we're in that situation is every year when it comes round to the budget, MSPs like Fulton McGregor, like Keith Brown, will press their buttons for a budget settlement that penalises local government and introduces cuts. That's the, that's the scandal. That's the scandal of this SNP administration. And see when we come round to the budget settlement, see if you'll get any guts, you'll stand up for your community and you'll argue, you'll argue for a budget. You'll argue for a budget that stops the cuts and supports local government. The other point I would make uh, is that it perplexes me to see that the minister responding to this event, is, is, uh, this uh, debate, is Graham Day, the Minister for Parliamentary Business. Why is it, when we have such an important issue on the closure of care homes, that nobody within the older people or health uh, team is actually responding to the debate? On this debate, of all debates, the two MSPs concerned uh, Christina McKelvey and Claire Hockey are part of the ministerial team and it's disappointing that they're not here to account uh, on this very important debate, particularly when we have local people and local campaigners uh, in the gallery. So I have to say that in terms of this debate, I don't think the SNP government are, t are, are treating the debate properly or treating the issues properly. I think Monica Lennon deserves great credit for bringing forward an important issue and I know from the strength of feeling in Blantyre and Lark Hall that this campaign will go on and Labour will co continue to press the case for proper care facilities and oppose the closures of McWhirter House and Captain House. Point of order, Neil Findlay. President Officer, I wonder if you could help me and help uh, my colleagues. Um, I think this is the first time, certainly, that I've seen in a members' debate no minister for the relevant uh, portfolio to come to Parliament to uh, answer to what is a very serious debate. Now, there are um, uh, people in the gallery, there are people in the community who are extremely concerned about the closure of care homes in their area. It is a huge discourtesy that a government minister will not come before this Parliament to take part in a debate and answer questions if necessary on such an important issue. I wonder if you could help us and the people who are being done a disservice, if there is uh, indeed anything you can do to bring the government here to hold them to account for their budget decisions. Thank you, Mr Findlay. Uh, on that point, uh, thank you, Madam for his point of order. Uh, it is up to the government to decide which ministers to put forward. The Minister for Parliamentary Business, uh, as a minister, is in many cases responsible for a number of areas, and it's not unusual for the Minister for Parliamentary Business to respond to members' debates. Can I call Graham Simpson to be followed by Claudia? Point of order, Keith Brown. Some guidance. I understand that these days these members' debates are much more like political stunts than they are actual members' debates in the way that they used to be. Yeah. But James Kelly said he condemned the decision of the Scottish Government in relation to this. This is the decision taken by a council. It turns out it was taken actually by the previous Labour councillors, one of whom is present today. But if that's the case, why is it the case that they're allowed to say it's a government decision when it's plain, even from the terms of the motion, this relates to the decision by the council? Yeah. In that case, uh, Mr Brown, that sounded entirely like an argument, a point of argument, not a point of order. Not something for me to rule on. Uh, could I call Graham Simpson to be followed by Claudia Beamish? Graham Simpson. Thank you, eventually. Um, can I thank Monica Lennon for succeeding in having this debate today? I signed her motion to allow it to get to this point, and I think that's important. Monica and I were councillors in South Lanarkshire. I was on the Social Work Committee of what was a Labour council, albeit with support from the Conservatives. And at that time, we saw the launch of a project which would start to change the model of care for older people. Reshaping care for older people trialled at Hermeyer's Hospital in East Kilbride. The thinking behind it was that it's far better to help older people to live independently 
or to be looked after in their own homes than in hospital or a care home. All the evidence shows that it's better for patients and that it's what most people want. There are savings to the public purse, but that's a result of doing the right thing and not for the sake of saving money. The pilot was undoubtedly a success and it started under the Labour Council of which Monica Lennon and myself were key members. I supported it and so presumably did she. The reduction of care home facilities may be happening under an SNP administration that's proving very, very easy to criticise on many things, but on this, they're continuing a direction of travel that's been some years in the making. There's been a further pilot, yes. Monica Lennon. I'm grateful to Graeme Simpson for giving way. Just for clarification, because there's been a few references, including from Fulton McGregor, does Graeme Simpson accept that the only vote to date on these specific care home proposals took place at June's meeting of the South Lancashire Council Social Work Committee. That's where the decision was taken. Graeme Simpson. I don't dispute that, but I'm saying the direction of travel started some years ago under Labour. There's been a further pilot this year focusing on intermediate and transitional care beds in homes in South Lanarkshire. 56 of the 80 people supported were able to return home. That's impressive. By giving people more choice and control over their lives under this model, it can help more than three times the number of elderly people as under the current system of residential care. That's got to be a good thing. The motion focuses on the closure of McWhirter House in Lark Hall and Kirkton House in Blantyre and says that the new community hub at St Joseph's in Blantyre is not a like-for-like -like replacement. Now, the model of residential care uh, within South Lanarkshire uh, Council care facilities has provided an excellent service over the last 20 years, but the model itself remained largely unchanged in that time. It's not kept pace with changing demand. The new facility will have the potential to offer a service to 261 people who are at risk of hospital admission or require being supported uh, post-hospital admission to return home. That's three times the number in care facilities. The closure of these homes is just phase one of a new model of care. Proposals for the next stage are yet to be worked up. Now increasingly, trends show that people in need of long-term care will have their needs better met in a nursing home offering clinical care. Council care homes don't have on-site 24-7 clinical support. This is actually about increasing choice. In the future, the council will be able to deliver a mixture of residential, transitional and nursing care provision. Transitional care beds were not previously an option. Presiding officer, it, it's very easy to criticise councils, particularly when they're not of your political persuasion. You can make capital out of it, but you've got to do it for the right reasons. I think South Lanarkshire Council is on the right track here, and as I said earlier, it's a well-trodden path started under Labour. Thank you. I call Claudia Beamish to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I too would like to thank Monica Lennon for bringing this motion to debate today. And uh, we do urgently need invest investment in our social care system. As we all know, our population is, is <coughs> aging and people are living longer. The demographics are changing. However, because of this and, the, in, and in the face of a decade of SNP cuts to council budgets, the local authorities are struggling to manage care packages in the community. Scotland's social care system is bulging at the <coughs> seams. In my region, only one month ago, a constituent whose local authority could not provide a care package agreed by social services contacted me. This was in Midlothian. And the response that was given was that with current resources, they could not provide any more care at present. This was finally resolved and the care package was met, but not without months of uncertainty for the constituent and the family. What of others who are in a similar trap? Increased care at home is absolutely part of the solution to increasing the demand in social care. However, I do highlight the comments of um, uh, Graham Simp Simpson in that it seems some people are able to say, let's close what we've got already 
and then we'll analyse what we need to do for a wider future. And this is causing enormous anxiety to residents at present in our care homes in South Lanarkshire, which just really isn't on. I mean, I do question the notion that many people currently living in a care facility would be better cared for at home. And I stress the point, many people currently living in a care facility. It seems to me that most of these people have gone into a care facility or care home, but they're not able to cope at home with carers' visits for shorter visits, or their carer is no longer able to look after them, their unpaid carer. And I know somewhat about this, as does Graham Simpson, as, as a, a, a co conveners of the cross-party group for carers, although he's now had to resign. I mean, McClymont House in Lanark is another such precious facility, which is so valued in Lanark and, and the rural community round about. And the, the hub-and-spoke uh, method proposed in South Lanarkshire Council must not be an excuse to cut beds and, and reduce resources now before there is a really clear future, broader care plan. We are at a tipping point for social care. Yes, people want to stay at home very often. And yes, they should be able to where it is practical and safe. And there are indeed even... Uh, polls that say that people would prefer to pass away at home. But the facilities must make, be there to make this possible, with more medical interventions being able to take place at home. And also, fuel poverty is a real issue for elderly people who are at home, whose homes are inadequately heated. And um, a local councillor recently told me a story of a constituent of hers who is 70 years old, looking after her 86-year-old mother who has dementia. It is people like this who are worried sick about their future and the, those kind of care home <coughs> facilities that um, my colleague Monica Lennon's talking about need to, I'm afraid I can't have, I've not got the time, uh, need to be kept open. We need investment now to improve care in the community and we need longer visits with more structured care at home. There, there are some really interesting examples which I don't have time to go into today which are being explored and are happening in other countries such as what I saw on a BBC documentary about a Dutch system where students live in a nursing home and offer support for a reduced rent. And these are having positive effects on an intergener intergenerational basis and tackling loneliness and isolation and helping to tackle depression for the older and the, and the younger people. And social co cohesion can be significantly uh, supported by these shared experiences and life perspectives. However, we must... While we must look to the future for all our sakes, across not just South Lanarkshire, but urban, rural, and the whole of Scotland, the consultation on this particular arrangement and the, the fear that this has put into people, as I understand it from people who've spoken to me, simply has not been a fair <coughs> consultation. There's been a proposal put to people, and that was it. That, there was no choice, there was no discussion, and I really think that what has happened in South Lanarkshire with the care homes that my colleague Monica Lennon has highlighted and the concerns uh, also about the climate house in Lanark are really not acceptable. And I support the motion in Monica Lennon's name. Thank you. And before I call the Minister to conclude the debate, Stuart Stevenson. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. I'm obliged for the opportunity to speak in this debate. And I thank uh, Monica Lennon. Uh, for providing the opportunity to have perhaps a slightly more broader based uh, discussion of uh, how we support older people in our community. I do so, of course, from the perspective of being the only person in the chamber at the moment who's in his eighth decade and therefore is perhaps uh, most uh, directly uh, thinking about what my future may be in the event of my health deteriorating to the point that I need the kind of care. And let me just make a few points of common cause with uh, Monica Lennon at the outset, just to, to show that uh, we need not simply focus on what might divide us, but also on what might unite us. It is entirely proper that the member brings forward a matter of constituency interest. I'm not entirely sure I agree with all those who've contributed that might suggest otherwise. Um, I also think that when she raised the issue of a 92-year-old with dementia, she was entirely correct to do so because there are some very special needs for people with dementia uh, that it is worth spending a second or two considering. They are, in general terms, because dementia comes in many forms, people who are relatively intolerant of any change, however small it may be, 
There are people who require a very regular uh, routine, who require certainty, and whose ability to understand change, however well-intentioned it might be, is more limited than it is for others. So I think it's correct to bring individuals who may be affected by change to a debate. Claudia Beamish in her contribution, uh, do forgive me, I'm going to speak very briefly. Uh, Claudia Beamish quite correctly uh, said that uh, we need to look at uh, longer visits in care homes, and I think that's a Scottish issue, and, uh, and uh, more care at home. And I actually fundamentally agree with Claudia Beamish uh, on that, and indeed she referred to the need uh, to look at Scotland as a whole. I, I think, however, we need to give a little bit of context to this. And the context is undoubtedly that we are making progress. We've seen, if I recall the number correctly, a 37% reduction in bed blocking, as we might commonly call it, uh, that means that we've got opportunities to look at things in a different way. In the context of the existing care homes being criticised uh, in their provision by the Care Commission, I think the option to do nothing is not one that's available uh, to the Council, as it would not be available to Councils uh, across Scotland. But I do just gently want to uh, close my short contribution, uh, presiding officer, by saying that these difficult matters that affect individuals who are in greatest need in our community very often are best conducted by trying to build coalitions of interest to affect this. I give as an example um, Tam Diel, a man with whom I had fundamental disagreements on a wide range of issues, but with whom I had an excellent personal relationship uh, and I worked on many occasions on matters of joint interest. I give an example of someone who was going to be thrown out of the UK uh, by the Home Office. Tam and I worked together. That person who was going to be thrown out in 1999 is still in the UK. Because we were able to put our political differences to one side and put at the heart of our concerns and the needs of our constituents. So in conducting this debate, in taking this issue forward, I encourage us all to not focus so much on the differences that there are, but on the commonalities that might help the constituencies of Monica Lennon, of James Kelly, uh, and of other MSPs who represent the area. It's difficult, it needs attention, but we're going to have to make change and update to changing needs, changing responsibilities, and different models of care. Presiding officer. Thank you. And I call the Minister Graham Dee to wind up this debate. Thank you. Uh, presiding officer, um, whatever uh, else this debate has done this afternoon, it has highlighted the vital role that care homes play in supporting people to live well in a supported homely setting. Um, and care in all its guises is something the majority of us will have had some form of personal contact with. It's an extremely important issue. It was therefore disappointing to note the tone set by Monica Lennon and the exploiting of it to launch a very personal, party political, motivated attack on another MSP, and I would gently encourage her to reflect upon that. Let me acknowledge the more measured and considered approach taken by Graham Simpson and indeed Stuart Stevenson. Uh, Graham Simpson rightly pointed out um, that this is about doing the right thing here. And, President Officer, I want to continue with Mr. Simpson's tone and pay due respect to an issue uh, I recognise matters to many people. The role of care homes is changing. That's a fact. And services are being redesigned to take account of the, our ageing population. <coughs> We're living longer, but not necessarily healthier lives. And the number of older people with complex needs has increased. Presiding officer, our models of health and social care need to change to ensure that we better meet the needs of an ageing population. That's why we've integrated health and social care and this government has taken steps to protect and grow services and integration by investing more than £550 million resource. At its heart, the integration is about ensuring people get the right support in the right place at the right time. Integration authorities are now responsible for almost £9 billion of funding to plan health and social care services so that these are sustainable in the long term. No, I won't. I, I won't. I'm sorry. So I, I have to point out... Uh, you refuse to take interventions from any members. I'm going to continue. South Lanarkshire Integration Authority is one of many areas looking to redesign services in this way. They've put forward proposals to ensure that more people can be supported to live well in their communities. At the core of this is a commitment to redesign a number of care facilities to provide more short and intermediate 
rehabilitation care. This aims to prevent prolonged delays in hospital and inappropriate admission to hospitals or residential care. The current model of delivery, as Graeme Simpson pointed out, has remained unchanged for many years, whilst the needs of local citizens have continued to change. At the same time, half of the council-run care homes are ageing in terms of layout and condition. Of course, it is right to point out that the demographic growth projections for South Lanarkshire suggest that the 75-plus and 85-plus population will rise year-on-year year by 2.7 and 5.2 per cent, respectively. But then the nature and the need is changing uh, too, and the provision must adapt accordingly. Perhaps mo most importantly of all, the feedback from people has highlighted an expressed wish to remain at home and in their community. Yes, South Lanarkshire is one of, yet South Lanarkshire is one of the highest users of care home beds in Scotland, having 41 care home beds per thousand population, compared to 36 across the rest of Scotland. The proposals in question have, I understand, been subject to extensive engagement with elected members, stakeholders, staff, the unions and the public. And crucially, the integration authority directions for residential care were unanimously supported by all voting members on the integration joint board, as indeed was the strategic commissioning plan 2016-19. We also know from international evidence that the approach is better, this approach is better for people. And as we've heard, there's also local evidence to back this by virtue of a successful pilot of the model in South Lanarkshire in 2017-18, which I understand resulted in 56 of the 80 people supported returning home instead of going into residential care. Presiding officer, it's been claimed that there will be fewer care home beds, but this new model will mean that up to three times more people will benefit from the new service compared to the old model. Changes like this are being proposed right across uh, Scotland, thanks to the opportunities to tailor services opened up with integration. Of course, as we've heard today, change is challenging. It requires leadership at all levels and appropriate engagement with service users and their families. As a constituency MSP, President Officer, I've seen great examples of care model reshaping in Angus South. The New York Care Love Care Centre and the approach to step down care are two such cases, and I commend those responsible for them. But I've also seen daycare provision removed in a crack handed way, which has caused distress to all concerned. It reminds us all of us of the opportunities available to make meaningful change that meet the changing need, but at the same time also highlights the need to take people with us on any change of course. The Government will continue to support, I, I have already indicated, President Officer, I will not take an intervention from the Member. The Government will continue to support our integration authorities to take bold steps required to redesign services which reflect the changing requirements of the population. We're also committed to free personal and nursing care. Scotland, I would point out, continues to be the only country in the United Kingdom to provide free personal and nursing care free of charge. And uh, the fact that um, the, the funding levels have been uh, ex uh, increased uh, over the period of this government being in power. Design officer, today's debate has provided an opportunity for all of us to recognise the important role of our care homes. However, it's also highlighted changing needs which require us to work differently and collectively across the health and social care sector. Integration authorities are doing just that, but they can only do it with appropriate leadership from local and national partners. And I want to close by reiterating this government's commitment to supporting integration authorities in developing services which are responsive to the changing needs of our population. But let me finish, President Officer, by echoing the words of South Lanarkshire Council leader John Ross from his recent East Kilbride newspaper, uh, news column, uh, where he said, I think how we look after our elderly is one of the most important issues we face. Our proposals are designed to give older folk exactly what they know, we know they want, to live at home and in their communities, and when necessary, they want our support to help them do so for as long as possible. No one wants to go into a hospital, and when they do, they want to go home as soon as they are fit to. They don't want to go into a care home unless they really need to, and if they do have to, they want the facilities to be as good as possible. These are the principles at the heart of the Care Homes Modernisation Programme. And I want to reflect his, fin his final comment where he said, and I think this echoes the points that Fulton McGregor and Graham Simpson made, that he urged everyone to put people before politics on this vital matter. Presiding officer. Thank you very much. That concludes our members' debate. And we will shortly move on to the next item of business, which will be a statement by the Cabinet Secretary on the educational experience of LGBTI young people.
Before I do, could I just uh, draw members' attention, particularly Mr. Cole Hamilton, um, I've given advice to members not to wear ostentatious campaign material in the chamber. I notice that every other member has observed that guidance. If Mr. Cole Hamilton wishes to be called to ask a question, I would ask him to leave the chamber, change his tie, and then he'll be asked to. Nothing against the tie campaign. It's drawn attention, and Mr. Hamilton's made his point. Thank you very much. I will just take a few moments for members uh, to change seats.